Tonight, Port Augusta's emergency department closed after a pipe burst. And Coffin Bay locals dig deep to raise money for Kangaroo Island. With the latest from around the region, your nightly news with John Hunt begins now. Good evening, it's great to be back in 2020. The Port Augusta Emergency Department will remain closed after an incident over the weekend. Just before midday on Saturday, emergency services were called to the hospital in relation to a patient bursting a water pipe in the ceiling. Laura Milovanovic has more. There has been large scale damage here at the emergency department caused by a patient who is believed to have broken a main water pipe in the ceiling. Absconded from police at the time and uh, was able to um, uh, make quite a, a lot of destruction around uh, the hospital. The incident led to large scale damage with the majority of the ward becoming waterlogged. Assessments are now underway to determine how long the department will stay closed. We'll continue to work from um, a new set up area until we, we know it's fully uh, safe to uh, fully restore the services back in that department. No patients or staff were affected by the incident. However, it will possibly spark changes to security measures. We, we will restore and get things back to normal order. I guess it's always an opportunity to, to review our, our emergency procedures and look at our securities. The hospital will otherwise run normally. All the community and anyone that's brought to the hospital um, by amb uh, ambulance is still um, treated as normal and everyone um, is receiving a service as normal. The emergency department will remain closed until further notice. However, residents have been reassured that the hospital is still open for emergencies. All minor medical situations should be treated by a GP. Five junior doctors have begun their internship at the Wyler Hospital. The program is aimed at promoting a career in rural medicine, encouraging students to fill critical gaps in our region's health network. Excited for their new roles, the new interns prepare for a busy year ahead. Managing patients around the wards, looking at um, their medications and also talking to patients in clinics. So I think the patients... Um come here for uh, lots of different presentations and there aren't quite um, I'd say the staffing or the specialties that you'd find in a city hospital. So I think the experience we'll get will be quite wide ranging. Students will take part in five rotations at the Wyala Hospital along with clinics in Port Lincoln and Port Augusta. It's hoped the program will also encourage the interns to consider rural practice. It's pretty much why I applied to rural, um, just to get more exposure to you know, our local people, the local communities. Being here as a rural student, I think definitely helps cement our decision to come back to Wyala as a for a career. We're hoping that this is a step forward in the state government's plan for rural generalist training to um, enhance the number of doctors that work in hospitals and in general practice in the region. With our region's health system stretched to the limit, the team are excited to get some hands-on experience across a diverse range of medical disciplines. So we're really hoping that the opportunity to work here will influence them to be uh, procedural GPs, rural generalists or specialists that are needed in the country. Sophia Contagonis, 7 Spencer Golf News. A Broken Hill man is facing a raft of charges following an alleged pursuit with police last week. Officers say while attempting to arrest a man, he broke free and ran off. Police engaged in a foot chase with a 30-year-old around the Wolfram Sulfite Street area. It's alleged a man punched a police officer when they tried to arrest him again. He's been charged with his outstanding warrant, as well as assaulting police, escaping lawful custody, resisting arrest and trespassing. Passengers on board Adventure Bay charters were left stranded at sea yesterday after their vessel suffered an engine failure near Thistle Island. The company's sister boat, which was also full of tourists heading to see the sharks at Neptune Islands, had to be diverted to tow the stranded vessel back to shore. Passengers on both boats received a full refund. 
Tens of thousands of dollars has been raised for the Kangaroo Island bushfire appeal at a fundraiser night held in Coffin Bay. Local businesses and communities donated where they could as the devastated island begins to rebuild. As the smoke clears, the full scale of the devastation on Kangaroo Island is emerging. It is unprecedented and uh, nobody can be untouched by it. The Air Peninsula banding together for fundraisers to help a community on their knees. It's what you do in the country, you support others. Coffin Bay's renowned restaurant 1802 hosted a bushfire appeal on Friday. No words that it was for me. It's a cause close to its owner who used to live on the island. Just seeing kind of the the friends and, and people that we know struggling and also the, the kind of region that we, we, we were living in kind of just decimated by uh, fires was pretty horrific so we thought we, we thought we could do something and yeah put on a bit of a fundraiser was the answer I thought. Local businesses opening their hearts donating food and drinks along with dozens of auction items. The night raising more than $36,000 for the KI Bushfire Relief Fund. I just thought I'd come down for the fundraiser and support um, Kangaroo Island. Seven News presenter and long-time property owner in the area, Jane Doyle, also pitching in as the MC. The people of Air Peninsula are extending their arms of friendship and love to those who've lost things in this fire season because they know very much at their hearts what it's about. It couldn't be more of a spectacular location for tonight's fundraiser here at 1802 in Coffin Bay. Hundreds of the community have shown up to show their support for island neighbours in their time of need. Many are reflecting on similar experiences here in the Air Peninsula. I suffered a bushfire a few years ago myself, so I know exactly what these people are going through. So the best, you know, the least we can do is, you know, donate some time. Nathan Regter, Seven Spencer Golf News. Still to come tonight, two business degrees set to be offered at the Port Piri Uni Hub, and young and old come together for a play date in Port Augusta. Welcome back. Regional students in Port Augusta and Port Piri will soon have access to two new degrees through a UniHub initiative. Management says it will help accommodate the region's growing demand for business-related professionals. Once lacking, now leading, Spencer Golf's UniHub will soon be offering two new business degrees. Staff say it's a step forward for regional education. Been in the works for a good 12 months now. We've done some industry surveys throughout Port Pirie and Port Augusta to find out what industry require and what they're interested in making sure is being offered to local students. Employment vacancies were and um, how we could look to address those vacancies. From that we received 158 um, responses from businesses and industries across the Port Augusta and Port Piri region. The initiative is in partnership with Flinders University and the two degrees include a Bachelor of Business and a Masters of Business Administrations. Which are both um, nationally um, recognised qualifications um, and um, recognised by industry bodies. And these degrees are being touted as a game changer for students. Staff say the skills and qualifications will be suited to a variety of industries. Since it's designed for business overall, it can be small business, it can be international business, it can be home business. It's simply designed to be varied to meet some student needs and other student needs all at once. School leavers and even mature age students are being encouraged to think about studying regional. Some students may have tried out Adelaide and it didn't work for them and they've come back home and not really sure what they want to do now. The UniHub offers degrees that you can actually study in this region without having to leave. More information can be found online. Shari Hams, 7 Spencer Golf News. A lack of water over the Christmas break has caused one of Broken Hill's major cricket ovals to become almost unplayable. The local cricket league says it's unfortunate, with venues around the town already in short supply. An oval more dirt than grass. When Barrier Cricket Chairman Peter Johnston visited the Norm Fox Oval after the holiday season, he was stunned by its condition. Two weeks without water, the oval was as dry as a bone. While some much needed water has made the oval a bit more green than brown, Mr Johnston says it needs more than that. The first thing we obviously do look at the watering system 
and from that point onwards, uh, once you've got the watering system sorted out, you can then start looking at planting grass. It's understood Council turned off the taps to the Oval before shutting down over Christmas. Strong winds in the dry conditions has caused dangerous erosion in patches. Uneven surfaces have made hosting matches here an insurance liability. We're supposed to do a um, survey of the Oval each time we play to highlight hazards with the uneven playing surface. Um, we really couldn't sign off on, on it uh, for a start. B grade and women's competitions both utilise the Norm Fox. Peter is also worried about the future of the cricket in Broken Hill if the juniors lose a venue to play on. We're pulling out all stops to try and keep kids or attract kids to the game. And if you haven't got the reasonable facilities for them to play on, it makes that a lot harder as well. The Barrier District Cricket League now forms the Overseer Committee for the ground. Their next step is to meet with Council in a fortnight to find a way to fix the problem. Council was contacted for comment. Patrick Reinke, 7 Spencer Golf News. Organisers of Wireless Pictures in the Park have declared it a success, with more than 200 locals attending Saturday night's movie. The outdoor cinema held at Adarang Gardens, also raising money for the SA Bushfire Appeal. A movie set to lift spirits during a devastating time. Bohemian Rhapsody playing on the big screen for everyone to sing along to. We are having one of a series of movie nights in the parks that the uh, Youth Advisory Council from Count the Wireless City Council are putting on. I'm really, really pleased with the crowd. It's an excellent turnout in the end and we're really happy with how many people turned up. With all popcorn proceeds going to an important cause, the Yak Committee were able to raise more than $200. It's quite heartwarming, you know, the fires have been incredibly confronting and devastating, but it's wonderful to see that they have brought people together and everyone's just like, we want to help. The fun starting with a lip-syncing competition. And the best dressed Freddy, with locals bringing chairs and blankets, enjoying the movie in comfort. I'm very excited and I'm really keen to sing the songs. I've got my PJs on and I can't wait for the movie. The mobile coffee cafe on site, warming up the crowd and also taking donations for CFS. We're here to support the fires in Kangaroo Island. We've got our hot chocolate ready, very excited for pop-up pictures in the park. There's lots of people and I can't wait to have a great night. More outdoor cinema events in different locations around the city are planned for summer, with dates to be released soon on the Yak Facebook page. Sophia Contagonis, 7 Spencer Golf News. Residents at Port Augusta's Enfield Family Care Nursing Home have had some youthful visitors stop by. A dozen toddlers visiting the home for a playgroup, helping build relationships between the city's youngest and oldest people. The event, which included playing games and singing, creating new friendships in the process. Well, I, I don't know. I loved all of it. And I'm so glad you're bringing them back again. The visits, which are organised by the Narelda Ramsey Auxiliary, will be held on a fortnightly basis. Very cute. Coming up after the break, Broken Hills Heritage Festival to tackle the city's controversial history. And a South Australian cricket legend visits Port Augusta. Organisers of Broken Hills Heritage Festival have added some controversy to its theme. The four-day event will focus on the scandals and secrets of the city's past, with some unique activities also in store. Diving into Broken Hills secretive and scandalous past. It's a really good time for both visitors and residents to learn about why we are a nationally heritage listed city. Organisers of the annual Broken Hill Heritage Festival have unveiled the theme for 2020, Secrets and Scandals. The event will kick off with the town hall facade lit up with lights and photos, a jaw-dropping visual show on the main street. Across the four days, there'll be a number of tours and events. A rather unique one is the Saturday night dinner in a CBD laneway. If you walk down the laneways right near Argent Street, there are some magnificent magnificent buildings. 
yeah, some magnificent heritage buildings. The lanes also holding their own secrets, famously hiding, gambling, boxing and ladies of the night. Elsewhere around town, a walking cemetery tour and also an old mine tour. Anyone in Broken Hill that has an idea for an event and they would like to run that, would they please contact us because we would love to see more happening around those, around those four days. The Heritage Festival will be held in April. Visit the Broken Hill Council website for more details. Patrick Reinke, 7 Spencer Gulf News. The Wyler Airport attracted some curious visitors over the weekend, with a goose roaming the baggage area and an emu strolling in through the front doors. Wyler Wildlife Rescue helped safely remove the birds, as airport security measures ensured they stayed off the tarmac. No flights were interrupted, and both birds are now safely in the wild, far away from the airport. Former Australian cricketer Greg Blewett has visited Port Augusta, taking junior cricketers for a clinic. Another special guest also joining them, with the Big Bash Trophy also making the trip. An Australian tour for the Big Bash Trophy here at Port Augusta's Etza Oval. Young cricketers getting up close and meeting cricket legend Greg Blewett. Yeah, it is. It's a bit different to see something that all the big cricketers for playing really good cricket. A workshop hosted by the retired Australian cricketer, showing them the value of playing together. Out of my cricket career, the most I learnt was always against my, either the teammates I was playing with or some of the players that I played against. Also giving tips on their game, whether it be batting or bowling. Yeah, a couple, just keep your bat straight, play nice and forward and yeah, hit the ball. Uh, just how to push down on the ball when you're coming down, like where your fingers have to be on the seam and pushing down on it. So, yeah, it's good. Yeah. Very helpful. As a teen, Blewett was an all-round sports player and remains a handy golf player. He says all kids should get on a field, no matter what one. Any, any sport in communities, um, in the rural communities are great. You know, it just gets people together. The old man, Dad, got me into cricket pretty much ever since I was could hold a bat, I've been playing cricket. Laura Milovanovic, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break. We'll recap the weekend's cricket action. And Britt will join us with the latest weather details. Hello again. Port Pirie's cricketers took to the field on the weekend, with the city hosting a round of the South Australian Country T20 Cricket Championships. Shari Hams has this week's cricket wrap. Well, it was a bumper weekend for cricket here at Memorial Oval with four teams battling it out in the Country Championships with a chance to play at the world-famous Adelaide Oval. Port Perry's Wanderer were successful in their first match against Pascoville Boar Plains, but then lost by 40 runs against Southern Air. Southern Air then defeated Gawler and were now playing the statewide T20 Grand Final at Adelaide Oval next month. In Saturday matches, Wanderer defeated Port Germain by three wickets, set 106 Wanderer past the total with around 10 overs to spare, despite at one stage losing four wickets for just one run. While in the other game, Solomon Town North had a four-wicket win over Props. Props battled first and were bowled out for 114, Solly North chasing down the total with a relative ease in reply. Heading over to Port Augusta, West Augusta held off a fast-finishing Central Sterling to win by 13 runs. And South Augusta bowlers came to the rescue, skittling corn for just 90 to give them the points. In Port Lincoln, it was the association match with Port Lincoln comfortably defeating Tumby Bay on Saturday and Charlton defeated Waybacks in the local T20 Grand Final yesterday. Jack Shanley, the man of the match. West picked up their second win of the season in Broken Hill Cricket, downing South by three wickets. While strong bowling from North saw Central's bowled out for just 78, the Bulldogs chasing down the total with four wickets to spare. Finishing off in the northern areas in Spalding, Bubawari, Bet, Wilmington, Melrose, Bellaley and Borough were also winners and a century to Mason Neagle saw Burkina smash Oruru. And finally in Wales, T20 Comp Central's downed West while Rapina had a comfortable win over South. We'll be back tomorrow night with all the other sports from across the region. Weather time now and it was a cool day today. But temperatures in our region are set to rise. Here's Britt with the details. 
Thanks, John. And you're right, it has been a mild summer's day. Broken Hill reaching just 28 degrees. Port Augusta 26, Port Pirie 25, Wyala 24, Port Lincoln 19. Here's a look at today's skies with a front and trough system bringing showers over coastal areas. Moving on to tomorrow on the waters, southerly winds tending southeasterly at 10 to 20 knots with seas at 2.5 metres. Sunrise just before half past 6. Looking to be warm and mostly sunny about the place tomorrow, Port Augusta with an expected top of 34 degrees, Woodna 33, Wyala 31, Broken Hill 30, Cleve and Kadena both 29, Clare 27, Port Lincoln 24, Coffin Bay a top of 23 degrees tomorrow. Quickly moving ahead through the week, showers forecast at Port Lincoln on Wednesday and Thursday, Cleve with strong winds expected on Wednesday, Woodna looking mostly fine over the coming days. Wyala, Port Augusta and Kadena all with strong gusty winds on the way on Wednesday, looking partly cloudy throughout the remainder of the week. Strong winds also expected at Port Perry, Clare and Broken Hill on Wednesday, all with fine conditions forecast for Thursday. And John, that's the weather. Thanks for that, Brett. And that's the local news this Monday evening. Thanks for joining us. I'll have updates later tonight, but until then, enjoy your evening here on 7. On behalf of the team, it's good night.